Hey, it's Dr. Charles, a.k.a. Coach MD. In my over 30 years of medical practice, I have made it my goal to help you create a great life by achieving a strong mind, a healthy body, and an unshakable spirit. Well, to achieve a healthy body, we have to know a little bit about our body. And in today's uh, re- in today's article that I'd like to review, this is talking about some of the different monitoring, the ways we can monitor our bodies with new technology. And here's the question of the, that this author raises, Dr. Robert Schmerling, the senior faculty editor of the Harvard Health Publishing, is blood sugar monitoring without diabetes worthwhile? And I'm going to say yes, and this author does not agree with me. Uh, And I've done this myself, and we'll talk a little bit about that. So uh, consider this. Uh, There's an ad that you haven't seen yet, okay, but maybe coming soon. A man jogs along a dirt path, meandering through an idyllic countryside, pauses at an overlook, and glances down at his cell phone. The phone screen flashes a number telling him his blood sugar is normal. He smiles and resumes his run. What's different about this ad, you wonder? The jogger doesn't have diabetes, so how does his phone know his blood sugar? And why in the middle of a run does he want to know the result? Now let's read on. Now I've done this, so I know, and we're gonna talk about it. Okay, if you don't have diabetes, should you monitor your blood sugar? Now several companies, they have made or created these, what are called continuous glucose monitoring systems, or CGMs. Abbott is one, Dexcom is another. Abbott has the Freestyle Libre, which I've used in the past. And if you look at my videos on uh, on this channel, you'll see I've talked about that in um, in some videos. You'll just look about losing weight and knowing your blood sugar, and just you could check those out on my channel. Uh, And while you're at it, why don't you uh, drop in and subscribe so you get to more see more of my content and comment on what 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 you're seeing. I'd love to hear from you. So these companies could reap enormous profits by convincing healthy people to start monitoring blood sugar. Now, yeah, they make money. Okay, that's the way it goes. And some of these companies, true, they will look to make money sometimes at the expense of true health. But in my opinion, let them make the money because what they're producing right now, I think with these uh, CGMs is unbelievable technology and could really help us a lot. So... Uh, Where's the health benefit in this? Okay, this author talks about uh, the best study that he could find because these things haven't really been studied, but they are being used in diabetics. What does continuous glucose monitoring mean? It means the elimination of sticking your finger. You know how much that hurts? Have you ever done that? It really hurts sticking your finger to check your blood sugar. A lot of diabetics uh, do monitor their blood sugar and have to do that. These continuous glucose monitors snap on your arm, very easy to install, no pain at all when you put it on. And then you take your smartphone, you scan it over and you get, it spits out a reading without any pain. Well, if it's good enough for diabetics and many endocrinologists who help patients with, those are hormonal doctors who help patients with diabetes, they're using these and they're implementing it. So yeah, they haven't been studying in normal people. That doesn't mean it, it doesn't work. Um, so this study that this author found uh, shows that 96% of the time, blood sugar levels were normal or nearly so. Well, yeah, but what happens when you eat certain foods? What happens to that? I'd like to know that. And in fact, yeah, this is my case. My blood sugar, when I put, I snap that on, it lasts for two weeks. I monitor my blood sugar. I learned some really interesting aspects of my body physiology from this that allowed me to tailor certain foods. And if you listen to the end of this uh, video, I'm going to go over some of the things that I learned from these CGMs. So uh, just because they're normal doesn't mean, uh, it, it says here, in fact, many of the abnormal levels were considered implausible or a mistake. Well, you know what? I tested my monitor. I tested it. I went to my Uh, former office, had my nurse draw my blood. And guess what? What I was getting on the CGM and what I got in the blood from the, from the actual stick, the blood stick were almost identical. So I felt that I could rely on that. So what else? Uh, Okay. So this author looked at another small study 
at sedentary individuals without diabetes who were overweight and obese. Okay, that's not the only reason why you should get this because you're overweight or obese or have, quote, pre-diabetes. Well, <clears throat> the participants, this is very good here, because the participants completed a counseling session about the effects of physical activity on blood sugar and used the CGM device and an activity tracker for 10 days. And guess what it did? They reported feeling more motivated to exercise. Okay, now again, listen to the end of this video because I'm going to go over what I found and the what exercise does to your blood sugar is very interesting. I do talk about that in some of my other videos, but you can get it right here. Exactly. Just listen to the end. But this author, because he couldn't find any published studies suggesting that monitoring translates into improved health, he doesn't feel that these are so reliable. All right. So he said, one maker of a CGM device posted this study on its website reporting better blood sugar results among healthy people using their product. However, the study wasn't published in a peer-reviewed medical journal. Let me tell you, a lot of these peer-reviewed medical journals are, are, are really, that we use that as kind of the benchmark of what we're going to use to go forward in medicine. But I can tell you, I read these peer-reviewed journals and some of them are just nonsense and are very biased and have a very particular slant. And the pharmaceutical companies advertise all over the place in those, those journals. So don't think that the authors of these peer review journals don't have any influence from the pharmaceutical industry. Because yeah, they might, very, and they do, because I've seen it and I know. Um, this isn't the forum to talk about that at some other point. So this author is saying, so until more studies prove the value of CGM for people without diabetes, we won't know whether the cost and time it takes to implant one of these systems. Implant? What is he talking about? Implant? Implant one of these systems? You know what it takes to implant one of these systems? It's a little disc. You slap it on your arm. It sticks on for two weeks. You don't even know it's there. It doesn't hurt. There's no implantation. It's very easy to use. Okay. He goes, or is this just the latest health monitoring fad wasting effort and money? Uh, I don't think so. Okay, so let's see what he says. Does he has he really investigated this? Because I'm gonna tell you something. Speaking of costs, CGMs aren't cheap. They can cost several thousand dollars a year, and it's highly unlikely the health insurers will cover CGMs for people without diabetes, at least until there is compelling evidence that they're actually helpful. Well, he did not do his research because they're not that expensive. Well, my, I don't have diabetes, and my health insurance covered four of them last year. Because you're not going to, if you don't have diabetes, you don't have to get one all the time. You're going to monitor yourself maybe a couple times a year. I had to pay a $10 copay. And let's say your insurance didn't cover it. It's $50 or $60. That's all. It's not that expensive. So let's say you pay $60 twice a year for this vital information that's going to tell you what your blood sugar is doing with certain foods that you eat. I think this is, it's not that expensive. It's not several thousand dollars a year. I mean, if you're getting it every two weeks and for 26 weeks out of the year, 26 uh, purchases out of the year, yeah, then, then it runs up. Uh, and, and if your insurance doesn't cover it, it could be pricey. But if you're not a diabetic or if you're pre-diabetic, you want to know what blood sugar is doing and how it's, it's running up and down. So... He's saying for people with diabetes, a major goal of therapy is to keep the blood sugar in close range. This can help uh, complications provide uh, improved quality of life. Yes, the development of CGM devices that can frequently and easily monitor blood sugar levels without finger stick sticks has revolutionized care for millions of people with diabetes. So if it's revolutionized care with millions of people who have diabetes, okay, and that means that it must, uh, the people using it must be able to rely on their blood sugar readings from this monitor. Well, why, why shouldn't people who don't have diabetes, why shouldn't we be able to rely on the information we're getting and then apply it, implement it into our own lives? lives? So he's contradicting himself here. Um, see, 
uh, besides providing results of blood sugar, some devices have alarm settings that alert the user or other people if blood sugar becomes dangerously low or high. And some systems can transmit results directly to the user's doctor if desired. I think those are all good things. So if knowledge is power, why not monitor your blood sugar? Okay. Detecting prediabetes. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. It could be particularly helpful for people at higher risk for diabetes due to family history or other factors. Yeah, that's good. Why not? I think that's a good idea. The notion of optimizing blood sugar for peak mental or physical performance. Okay. Well, if you could rely on this, you know, maybe get an idea. I'm not saying that we really know what optimal blood sugar levels are. I, I don't think we know that. So I would say that I wouldn't recommend CGI, CGMs for that um, because that that would be, um, I think, pushing it the information to a, a level that, that really can't be supported. The illusion of control. Having more information about your body may provide you with a sense of control over your health, even if you take no immediate action. I don't think that's an illusion of control. I think that is having more control. That's real. That's not an illusion. Curiosity. Let's face it. It's tempting to gather information about our bodies that might be interesting, even when we're not sure what to do with it. Well, let's see what he has to say about that. Truly, knowledge that is useless, redundant, or inaccurate doesn't make you powerful. Well, why are you saying that the CGMs give you information that's not accurate? Huh? You just said that it's revolutionizing the care for diabetics. So if the, uh, if, if the information's inaccurate, I, I don't see why that would, how that could be. Why, why are you using it for diabetics then? It's okay to have inaccurate results for diabetics. No, I think it's more important to have accurate results. So if it's accurate for them, why not for me? And why, I, 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 it does make me more powerful, okay? So let's see what the bottom line, which I disagree with. Unfortunately, some CGM systems aren't waiting for solid research results to market these devices to healthy people. I'm not waiting for that. I did it. I did it myself. So consumers and marketing professors, not researchers or doctors, may wind up driving demand for this product. I'm a doctor. I tried it. It worked for me. I think it can work for other people. That's, you know, I, I think the market actually is a pretty strong, powerful method to, uh, you know, to see whether things work or not. People buy things that work. They don't buy things that don't work, right? So do you agree with me? Leave me some comments, subscribe to my channel, hit the little bell also because that'll notify you when I uh, release something else. I'd love to hear from you. So definitely take the time to do that uh, so you can get, uh, see what I'm doing with this channel. And if you have any ideas, what, you th what you'd like to see also, uh, shoot me a, a comment. I appreciate it. Uh, for any new technology, there's a scientific learning curve to figure out when to use it. In my view, we're at the very beginning of the learning curve for home monitoring blood sugar and people without diabetes. I don't think so. I, I, why waste time trying to figure this out? So let me tell you my experience with the CGM. I use the Abbott Freestyle Libre. I have no connections with Lab, uh, uh, Abbott. I'm not on their payroll. I thought it was an interesting device. I thought right away that this could help people who don't have diabetes. And I wanted to know what certain foods would spike my blood sugar. I've heard all the time, you know, low carb diets and uh, keto diet uh, and, and watching what, what certain foods. So I did some testing and I'm going to do another video uh, that will talk about uh, uh, protein bars and energy bars because I tested a bunch of them to see what they did uh, to my blood sugar. And it was fascinating. There were some, uh, I'll, I'll give you an example, uh, what's called a perfect bar. A perfect bar, if you look at it, it, it looks like it has a lot of sugar and it didn't spike my blood sugar one bit. But a Cliff Bar, which a lot of people, uh, I think Serena Williams was uh, is, is one of their spokespeople, then they, uh, they, they really promote it, whatever. It spiked my blood sugar really high. So that might be good if you're going right out to exercise and your muscles will consume that sugar. But if you're using it as a snack or a meal replacement, not such a good idea. I also noted that certain foods 
Uh, certain fruits, for instance, would spike my blood sugar up. Does that mean that I avoid fruits? No, but it means that I set the timing of when I'm going to eat them during the day. And if you, if you tune into some of my other videos, you'll see what that timing is, what I talk about. Um, also, I noticed potatoes, my favorite. I love potatoes, spiked up my blood sugar really high. So how has this changed the way I uh, approach my, my diet? Well, does that mean I'm never going to eat potatoes again? No, but with that knowledge, I'm going to eat them less. Potato chips, for instance, would I love to snack on them occasionally? Well, I snack on them much less, uh, very infrequently now, right? And if I'm going to, I only have a few because they spiked up my blood sugar and really high, almost like taking a, a teaspoon of sugar obviously candy and those kind of things, but things that I didn't realize would spike it up that high. I learned and I got that information. And I think for people who are trying to lose weight, for instance, or trying to get more fit, it's important to know what foods fluctuate and, and spike your blood sugar. One very interesting piece of information that I learned from this was that weight training, really vigorous weight training actually spikes your blood sugar. So I uh, do CrossFit. That's a very vigorous type of activity. I love it and it's I feel it's very good for me. And I noticed that when I would go through a vigorous workout, it would spike my blood sugar as though I ate a, uh, you know, a big lunch with, with carbs. So my blood sugar would spike up, not in the diabetic range, but it would spike up. And that's because the body, when you exercise, it releases cortisol, which is a stress hormone, which can elevate blood sugar. But guess what? The blood sugar went down rapidly. So it showed me that yes, when we uh, do that exercise, it might spike it, but that doesn't mean don't do it. It means do it more because your body will get used to those fluctuations. Uh, but when I did aerobic exercise, for instance, biking, my blood sugar actually went down. My muscles were working to consume that blood sugar. Does that mean that I, I shouldn't uh, do aerobic activity like biking? No. It just means that I, I might want to take some type of you know, sugar in a healthy form, uh, like a, 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 um, a powdery drink that has a little bit of sugar in it prior or during my aerobic workout. So that's vital information I thought was very important. So let me know what you think about uh, what I have to say here. Give me your comments, subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear back from you. So in next time, until next time, I'm Dr. Charles, AKA Coach MD, urging you to stay strong in mind, in body, and right here in Seoul. Bye for now. Charles, Coach MD, thanks for stopping by. Make sure to like and comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you think you have a friend who might benefit from this video, share it with them. For access to exclusive content, support my Patreon. There you'll get private access to videos, meditations, health tips, even relationship and financial tips. You'll have a say in what I produce and be able to participate in a monthly call with me. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. See you soon.